Hey there, Patty Dominguez here. Thanks for joining me on this episode of the Positioning to Profit podcast. Today, it's episode 69. We are featuring Barbara Hurst, straight out of Switzerland, who is a brand identity expert. And she is a photographer who refined her message. And now she helps her clients stand out with images that really create a new conversation no matter what the space they are in. So I absolutely love her heart. She's super bright and has a lot to say specific to how to stand out, which is, as you know, one of my very favorite topics. So this episode uh, is intended to inspire. And also, I really give her a whole lot of credit for getting out of her comfort zone because this is her first podcast. And I absolutely love it. And I applaud because all good stuff happens right outside of your comfort zone. So I applaud anybody who takes action in this way. So thank you, Barbara, for being on the show. It is very inspiring to hear your message, your gifts, and it's such a joy to see you flourish. Here we go. Let's go. Hey there, I'm Patty Dominguez. You're about to discover what it means to position your brand and your business to stand out. This show explores the stories of small business owners just like you who are bringing their message out to the world and impacting their tribe. So if you want to take your business to a category of one status, then hang with me because this podcast shares everything you need to know about how to be more prolific with your brand so that you can have more profits. And we're live. All right. So Barbara Hurst, thank you so much for being on the Positioning to Profit podcast. It is such an honor to have you. And I know that before we hit the record button, you had said, okay, this is all new territory for me and the whole podcasting thing. So I give you so much credit for diving into something that is out of your comfort zone. So congrats for that. Oh, thanks. Thanks very much, Patty. I'm so excited to be on here. And <clears throat> this is, sorry, this is really all new to me, way out of my comfort zone. Um, I have to stretch my horizon. I've got to jump in and do this. Mm-hmm. Um, I am a brand photographer, mm-hmm. but a little bit different than other brand photographers. I, I'm the only one with a visual identity framework which um, helps people to stand out uniquely in their industry. So many brand photographers are doing all these pretty pictures, mm-hmm. perfectly posed. But what I do is, is really um, capturing the, the moment, the essence of the person. Because everybody is their own brand. Yeah. And if you're unique in your own brand, you stand out and you don't really have any competition. Mm-hmm. If you know what I learned through your course as well, if you know where your clients are and how to find them, and if you understand the pain points and you speak to them visually with images to make sure that you come across like somebody who can solve the problems with images. Mm -hmm. So people, when they go to the website and look at the website and see images that show, oh, this guy can really help me. I can see those images. I see how it's going to work out. That's a great benefit for everybody. It really is. And I love everything that you're saying because it really speaks to everything that I talk about. It's like, instead of just saying that you're a brand photographer or a photographer, you've really taken a, a unique approach to it. And I think for the, for the listeners to understand whatever it is that you're doing, there's always an opportunity and it's almost an obligation to differentiate. And the reason why differentiation is so important is because there's so much competition out there. So you can see how succinctly you started talking about, okay, visual identity strategy. And the idea here is that we want to create a new and compelling way of, of presenting an idea. And the wonderful thing about the way that you just said that is that it, it really allows people to understand that there's a new opportunity beyond just taking pictures, right? Beyond just doing random pictures that are almost like an afterthought, like, okay, I need pictures. And then you do pictures, but there's no real thought process to that. So can you talk a little bit about 
that that visual identity framework that you're talking about? Like what makes it different than what other people are experiencing mm. with their you, yeah, you know, sure. local photographer? Yeah. Well, um, the main thing is a lot of people have no idea what, what kind of pictures they need for the website. Mm-hmm. And the whole thing starts really with the stories. What stories do you have? You have to discover, basically you have to rediscover or discover your why. Why you do what you do. Yeah. And that's happening with my discovery. The first pillar of my four framework, uh, four pillar framework Mm -hmm. to discover your stories and how you can tell them visually Mm -hmm. because you don't want to show everything you don't want to show too many too private things you really want to show how you interact with your customers and basically how you help your customers so many people still want to try to sell their expertise and the products and the service and all going to say, oh, look at me, I'll have this and this and this and it's wonderful. Just go and come and buy from me. But the main thing is, is that you, you are here to solve your customer's problems. So you have to show that visually. Mm-hmm. So we discover, first of all, what would you like to tell about yourself and your company and your, uh, your private a little bit of but your private life as well it, it, because it's your brand it's you as a person they say they're, they're buying from you as a person not not the product because it's it's the product they get in the end but they're buying the feeling behind it and they get the feeling by knowing you and they get to know you through authentic pictures and images on your website or social media so, so let me ask you a question. Yeah. So let me ask you a question really quickly when it comes to that. So in order for somebody to connect with the person, I believe that that authenticity has to come out. So are you saying that your visual interpretation is that you help your clients to generate those authentic pictures? And I'm assuming that people are not even aware of just what makes them unique, and you're able to do that and draw that out through this process that you're talking about. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, that's right, yeah. So many companies do, they have a process, they do it every day, yeah. and they're not aware that they're doing something which ordinary people don't know Right. what they do. Um, for example, I was photographing an optician, and they are the only one who have a, a 3D laser um, machine who makes uh, 3d glasses straight away in the shop um but she didn't want to show that in images and i thought that would be perfect thing to to show people because that makes you different right and like you say as well different is better than better that's your yeah thing. yeah <laughs> it, it's so true yeah you just is. have to find that one thing nobody else is showing in your competition to so, so you stand out and how did it go with her when you brought that up to say no 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 you should be highlighting that um do you find that people are hesitant or they to your point they're like really that's what you want to highlight um they they may gloss over it because they're not really recognizing just how special it truly is the the point is is that we're so in it that we don't see the things that make us different and that's why having an expert like you uh, analyze and really take a look at what are those differentiation points is so critical. So how did she react to that when you were kind of going through that process? Well, first of all, she was surprised that I, I thought that would be something worthwhile to to show. Yeah. And then she was really quite worried that it might not be appropriate or it mm. might be too show off, mm. um, too out there, too, too new. And she was worried that it might even people put off coming to the shop because it's so new. Interesting. Um, so I might have another photo shoot with them later on in the year because yeah. they're going to refurbish the shop. So I plant the seed <laughs> in her mind that it might be something that would be worthwhile to, to, to showcase to people. Well, and if I can interrupt just one more time, because <laughs> yeah. I think it's really important to take note. Isn't it interesting that she said, well, I don't want to seem like I'm showing off, 
right? Like yeah. that's an interesting perspective and that's a self-limiting belief mm-hmm. because it's actually, what if you can flip that and say, no, this is the thing that, that makes you different and unique and special. And, and the thing is, is that, and again, everything that we talk about here, I always want to relate it back to the person that's listening is if you feel that apprehension about like, no, that's me showing off. It's like, wait a minute. First of all, how do you know that? right? Because that you're just making up a story that you're showing off and what it, and you're making it about you. And that's something that I personally learned myself is that it's not about me. It's about the gifts that I have that I can help others with. And so what if, right, just to reframe it for that client, what if she can see it as like, no, this is something that makes you new, unique, and different that you can share with your customers to say, this is such a value add that I'm presenting to you, my prospective client, and here's why this is important. So again, you flipping it, instead of it being about you, make it about your prospective client. I just wanted to to, um, to kind of put that in there because I, I know this happens not only with your clients mm-hmm. at all, Barbara, but with me too. Yeah. Like people feeling like, oh, I'm showing off. No, you're not. If you feel that way, it's because it's just a story and you're making it about you. And I really want to encourage you, not you, Barbara, but people listening, just stop doing it and make it about your prospective client oh. and how it benefits them to understand the value proposition of what you have. Exactly. That's why how I feel like here on the podcast. Yeah. It's not about me. It's what mm-hmm. what I um can solve what how I can help solve problems for my clients. And I I, I don't think it's a gift, but I I can see stories. It people is a gift. Me, people love to talk to me and yeah. it is quite it is it's a working together. It's like we have to really get into the deep with stories and things mm-hmm. first because you can have loads of nice pictures on the internet or on websites and on social media, but you need to have a little bit of text with it. I mean, they do say a, a good picture tells a story, but most people would like to sell something as well or say something to the picture. So you need to have the text as well. So, and in order to make those pictures, to create those images, you need to have the story first. So you have to, yeah, you have to sit down and think first a little bit where where all this come from and why you want to help people, um, how you got about and, you know, all this, the process and everything. Mm-hmm. And I can see... I can see pictures, I can see stories in pictures immediately. If somebody talks to me, I can I can see images. It's like a film going past my eyes. It's just I love that. It's, it's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So continue yeah, so, with your framework. I yeah, love this. Yeah. The thing is, one of the main problems people have is they are so anxious yeah. um, in front of the camera. And to be honest, I have the same. Yeah, it's very common. Everybody, everybody has that. Um, And another thing is that there is a thing going around now that posing is like a bad word now, that Mm. everybody wants to have authentic images, um, just spur of the moment images, but you need to have a little bit of, of posing in images because you want to look, nice you want to look good in images Mm -hmm. and it also gives you confidence so what I have is um, a guiding a posing guide to give to people so they can practice at home already so when they arrive at the photo shooting and work with me they have go to poses and they feel confident enough what to do with hands what to do with the feet or how to stand or especially with the face and I have been studying a lot about a micro expressions and that is uh, something that quite not not so new it's actually been used by security personnel Hmm. and police to detect um mini movements in the face which can um, show them if the person is up to no good or if you know how how the how the people are 
Oh my God, yeah. <laughs> that's so, so crazy. How they are. I mean, how they're feeling. And it helps me to, to find out how people are feeling when I see them the first time, when I talk about photo shooting, how they are reacting. There are very, very small movements of the face. They last um, one fifth of a second. They're really, really hard to see. Um, and I got to know that through research. I wanted to find out how can I make people more comfortable confident and comfortable in front of the camera yeah. and it's not just with posing it's also with a mindset mm -hmm. that you have to have the right thoughts to go into the photo shoot so you feel calm and relaxed all right I have a story yeah. with I have yeah. a story with that <laughs> in 20 what was it 2015 I hadn't done a photo shoot and I did my photo shoot because it was time for me to get pictures I have not done a photo shoot since then because when I did it, I was freaked out. I didn't have the proper guidance. And the the woman that took my pictures, I thought she did a nice job and everything like that. But we did do a lot of pictures. And in full transparency, I didn't know. I'm like, what do I do with my hands? What do mm -hmm. I do with my feet? And I wasn't guided. And actually, uh, I did a couple of other photo shoots. So I take it back. I've done maybe three or four and nobody ever stops and like says, oh, do this or do that. It's really uncomfortable. Really? And yeah. it's very awkward. And I didn't have, I hate the experience. I hate it. And as a matter of fact, I do need to get some new pictures done because it's time, right? I totally look different. And the and the thing is, is that I, I wish you were in Chicago because you're in Switzerland, right? In Switzerland. Okay, yes. you're in Switzerland. Yeah. <laughs> All right, we are about halfway through with this episode of the Positioning to Profit podcast, and I wanted to stop by with a share that I'm really excited about. Now, the fact that you're here means that you're probably looking for help with your marketing. I mean, let's face it, most of the marketing tips and the buzzwords that you hear out in the marketplace center around tactics that small business owners can employ. The problem with that is that there's a whole lot of tactics out there, but not a whole lot of strategy, and that's where I come in. I help. Coaches, consultants, and entrepreneurs position themselves for profit. It won't cost you millions of dollars like the bid brands, but it will cost you some time. And in this special book that I put together, you can find it over at positioningguide.com, positioningguide.com. I go into the essentials of positioning to profit, which is a guide that I put together for coaches, consultants, and entrepreneurs struggling to stand out. So head on over to positioningguide.com and grab a copy for yourself. All right, let's get back to the show. That would be so helpful because it's intimidating. It's super intimidating. And that is such a pain point of me not knowing what to do with my hands, how to pose, how to put my head or how to maneuver my body in a way that is complementary to how yeah. I look. Instead exactly. of just standing there like a ding-a-ling, like I didn't know what no, I was doing. It's so intimidating. Poses for different body shapes. And um, basically, you need to have a flow of poses. You want yes. to, most people think you have to do really quick movements and move over there and walk there. And, right. and then you sit down there. No, it's not. It's nothing like that. Mm. You can do up to 10 different poses with just two movements in in the chair or standing and you get a, a bunch of really good different images so you you do have to know what to do with hands and feet and how to stand and every body shape is different i have worked with a lot of different people men and women and groups and the higher they are up in the company mm -hmm. the more nervous they are really yes. that's so interesting I found that, especially if you do um, pictures huh. of, of groups of, of a team, the boss or the, or the woman was, they're always more nervous than everybody else. Wow. You can see that they, they rub their hands, they're holding their neck or they're fiddling with the clothes and or they're trying to shuffle behind each other so they're, they're not right in the front. Even if they are, they're, they want to look competent and important and yeah want to stand out but at the same time they're really scared of this big black camera thing I'm holding in my hand mm. and it's so important that I have to guide them this is very important I love that to show them what to do yeah and that's why I have a complete plan 
it's not just um, I'll arrive on a day and then <clears throat> we do some pictures. It's really, it's, it's the whole workflow. And I have a brief. So we know, for example, if somebody wants to have pictures for the complete new website, we need to have um, a comprehensive plan uh, for the, the about page, the service page, pictures for that. They're all different. They have to say something different. So you have to have a flow for that. And then it's really the right props with it and how we incorporate the, the brand colors in, in clothes, in, in the style or in the mm-hmm. background. The um, location is very important as well. You cannot just always take images in the room where you are. It has to show a little bit um, a neutral background as well, for example. And branding photography is different anyway for any other photography because you have to take a lot of pictures further away with a lot of white space around. Mm Um, as I know from web designers, they need specific images in the specific sizes. Even the close-up and um, the things you see all over the place, like the keyboards and the coffee mugs and things, mm-hmm. you need you need space around it so a web designer can work with it. So you can't go in too close. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. And I think this is where it's so important is that if you're if you are a service provider, one of the things that's so important is to make note to say, oh, I'm just a photographer. No, you're not. There's so many different things that you can do for the person on the receiving end. And what, Barbara, what you talked about has everything to do with making that client's experience that much better Mm -hmm. because they're investing in you and you want to make the the end result, the final package, something that they're really proud of. And in every single engagement, whether you're a service provider, you have a product, what we as business owners are promising is a transformation, is exactly. a transformation. So, yeah. and I think this is such a great and comprehensive approach that you've taken mm-hmm. is you directly have such an intimate understanding of that client. And that was kind of shocking for me to hear that people in the corporate jobs, like the leaders are the ones that yes, are most are. intimidated, which is so fascinating to me. Really? It is fascinating. Yes. <laughs> and so understanding the nuances of who you're speaking to and meeting them where they are in their own head is priceless. So you, you're you doing that and that's what makes you far and away different. Mm-hmm. So talk to me about what you see as how you're getting your marketing out there. What are you planning and how is this plan working for you? Well, I have um, this new um, pilot program as well coming up soon. Um, because one of the pain points of my clients are is they... Every time they need new pictures and images, they need to book another photographer. Mm -hmm. And they need to have the hair done, the makeup done. They have to sort out the clothes and everything. But I've got to tell a story there. Because Mm -hmm. when I just started out, I've done many, many years uh, as a portrait photographer, events photographer, um, interiors as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I got to know my people... I was photographing, they were saying, oh, can you just take a picture of me wearing this? Or can you just take a picture when I'm holding this? Because this is what actually I'm doing as a hobby. And it's it started to out like that. The more and more people were interested in, in actually showing what they're doing as well. So I thought, hmm, that's interesting. So I looked more into that and um, discovered that there's such a thing as obviously brand photography. There's brand strategist and brand branding who do the whole website design and all that behind or like what you do the um the positioning and everything Mm -hmm. so i'm just the visual um aspect of that and for me it was very important to to help people getting the right images Mm -hmm. so now i didn't have um pictures for myself so i was looking for a photographer doing the pictures for me Mm. But it was so tough to find somebody who actually understood what I was trying to get. I didn't want to get pretty images of me. I wanted to actually have images of showing me how I am as a person. So people yeah. want to connect with me. And I'm 
I'm, I, I, I like fun and I like it easy and relaxed and I want to come across as easygoing and that they can listen to people and they can trust me. Um, yeah. So it's, it's very important to feel good on a photo shoot because just the other day I was looking through a box of my old pictures of images and I saw one from, from New York when I was on the Twin Tower. It was obviously many years, years ago. Wow. And I was holding that image in my hand and was thinking, wow, I just remembered how I felt. It was just like, like it was yesterday. It, it just, it, it feeling came back to that moment when I stood on top of the tower and looked at the beautiful view at night with all the lights. And this is so important because when we look at images, we often associate the feelings we had at the time when the picture was taken. And that is very important when you have a brand um, photo shoot as well. I you need that. to feel relaxed. You need to feel like really confident and knowing what you do. If you know what you do and you, if you know what's coming to you, then you can you can trust the process and relax. Yeah. I love it. And it's so important. I love what you're talking about is that what even though it's a photo shoot that may take two hours, let's say, but the impact of that photo shoot and the assets that you have afterwards are so significant. Mm -hmm. Um and I love that you want to make sure that your your visual assets are evoking those emotions and that time and the space where you were in that moment and what it really represents is such a meaningful way to connect with people. So I highly encourage you, um, people who are hearing this, is like invest in a photographer. I wish you were everywhere, Barbara, <laughs> because so many people need you. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to do right now to reach more people because I'm only one person. I can only do that many photo shooting in in a day or in a week so in order to reach more people i discovered there's this pain point as people that just haven't got enough time or money to book a photographer every time mm -hmm. so <clears throat> if i do this this strategy this blueprint like a to z from uh, discovering your story your brand colors fonts and everything all that the yeah of it and also give them a detailed step-by-step -step photo shooting guide scene by scene what they can do um, so they can shoot their own images anytime they want also obviously guide them how to use their mobile phone or if they want they can book a photographer in their region in their area and give them that to the photographer. So the, the photographer knows then what to do step by step, which images are needed, horizontal or portraits or further away. Right. It's so important. So that's what I am going to do in the next few weeks. Um, it's an eight-week pilot course, and I'm looking for six people to participate in my pilot course. Um, it will be weekly calls and all the material I would like to have um, feedback on that to see if it's of any help at all. If it helps people, then in the end, to be confident enough to do their own photo shoot at home, even with a friend. Because often if you take pictures with a friend, you're already more relaxed. That's true. As yeah. if you have a, like a photographer coming to your home or to your workplace. Yeah. It's like not a, a strange person to come into your life. Yeah. And it's very personal uh, taking pictures because it's it's very intimate. You, you you have to talk, you have to guide the person, and if you can do it with a friend or even with yourself, that's even better. Because often you maybe just have your hair done, or you get some really nice nice clothes, mm. or you just have something you want to show right now. But you know how to set the camera or set the phone or you know how to pose yourself with your hands and your arms so yes it's right. so important yeah. you don't have a double chin or you don't have um, show bulges you don't want to show right. <laughs> <laughs> it's always it's always a problem yeah that's awesome so okay so this pilot program how do people find out about it well it's best if they actually contact me through my website okay and the website is, url uh, www um, dot barbara uh -huh. 
um, and you find the um, a video and also a form you can fill out. So I have the first idea of your of your needs, what you need, and you can um, book a discovery call with me so we can find out even more what you would like and uh, if the program would be anything for you. That is perfect. Yeah. Okay, so people contact Barbara at barbarahurst.com to find out how you can really make the most of these visual assets um, and speaking from someone who knows what she's talking about as a visual identity strategist with Barbara Hurst is very, very talented and is looking at picture taking in such a different and distinct way. I highly encourage you to engage with her. Um, all the information will be in the show notes of how to get a hold of Barbara with her domain, um, her website website as well as her social media handles. And then just one last question for you, Barbara, what positioning advice would you give someone who is looking to expand their business? To expand the business, just show up. I mean, it is, it is difficult for some people who have never been on video or um, the main, the main fear is, it's always fear based and fear is mainly because they want, you get judged from other people. Mm -hmm. That's why all these CEOs and big companies are mm -hmm. so scared or fearful of, of images of cameras because they don't want to look um, stupid or silly or, and that's not, that's not the case. Mm -hmm. It's all in people's head and people's mind because everybody gets judged. And since I discovered that um, it opened up the whole world for me because you just have to show up and, like you said as well, you can't just have, you can't have a good product, a good service, and then just wait on the sideline. Like you said, just, hey, look at me. I'm, I'm over here. Just come to me. No, you have to put yourself out there. You have to Especially show now, up. everybody, everybody's online, mm -hmm. um, especially this year with, with the COVID and everything. So a lot of business try to pivot and put everything online. And it is very, very busy out there. We have been bombarded with pictures all the time and images and videos. I mean, if I look at my Facebook feed, it's just, it's just, it's horrendous. Every, every second video is about some marketing or some other course you can do. And, yeah. and it's really, really, really difficult to, uh, to be getting, to get be seen from people. So you just have to find that one thing that makes you unique. I love it. And then just show up. In images and show up. Yes. Perfect. Okay, Barbara, thank you so much for being on the Positioning to Profit podcast. Again, all of the ways to get a hold of you will be in the show notes. Thank you so much. It's such an honor to have you on. I'm so proud of you because I believe um, this is the first podcast you've ever done, right? This is the very first podcast. Yay! <laughs> you did it. Anymore. Post. <laughs> podcast podcast yeah. yeah all right well straight from switzerland you heard it here for with barbara hurst barbara i appreciate you i know you're going to do really great things to help people uh with their visual identity because you're showing up so congrats for that and um i look forward to hearing more about how your business is flourishing yeah thank you very much patty that was great i loved every minute thank you <laughs> awesome Thank you so much for checking out the Positioning to Profit podcast. If you haven't already done so, please make sure to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any new episodes. And also, it would mean the world to me if you would take a quick moment to leave a rating and review on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, or your favorite podcast player. It really helps to get the word out about the podcast and, of course, the featured guests. And lastly, please make sure to connect with me on social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, I'm on all of them and use hashtag positioning to profit so that I can <laughs> search you out and connect that way too. All right. Thanks so much. See you next time.